And that's why uh, I believe some of us are notorious about not following up or discipling people that need help. And, uh, uh, you know, it's wonderful. You know I'm not preaching against the altar today because if anybody believes in the altar, I do. But sometimes people uh, need a support. People that know that other people are behind what they're doing and, and love them and will help them walk through whatever they're going through. I think that's vitally uh, important today. Um, so this coming Wednesday night, if you want to be part of that, we will be here at 7 o'clock. <clears throat> I'm going to read from the book of Genesis, chapter number 28, beginning at verse number 16. The Bible says, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took a stone that he had put up, put, excuse me, put for his pillow and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob bowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee, excuse me, give the tenth unto thee. This passage of scripture is talking about what I call a very crucible moment in someone's life, uh, a life-changing, life-altering event, uh, a, a, a memorable, memorable event, something that when it happens, you just don't get over that, uh, and it was very common uh, in the Hebrew culture, uh, whenever something happened, a lot of times they would build an altar, or in this case, uh, he put pillows, or excuse me, stones there, and for a memorial to attest or be able to remember the night that I really realized that I was in the presence of God and didn't actually know it. Uh, I'm going to start my message off today uh, saying this. I believe a lot of times people are in the presence of God and they do not know it. <laughs> I believe a lot of times we are so caught up in us, we are so caught up in our environment and caught up in our circumstance and situation, uh, Brother Michael, we don't even realize that God is there, uh, possibly because I do not feel him, Sister Julie, or see him. I get so caught up in my moment or, or whatever this time is and, and I uh, have excluded God from that because there's no way God could be in my situation. Uh, you know, this is too bad and it's too terrible. There's no way God is here. Uh, well, I, I don't want to mess you up too bad today, but I am going to have to bust your bubble because he's always there. <laughs> Hello? I said he is always there. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter the geography, the circumstance, the situation. He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Do I feel him sometimes? No, I do not. Do I think he's there sometimes? No, I do not. Except for my knowledge of the word of God tells me different than what I feel. So here's the kicker. Embrace what you know, not what you feel. <laughs> Hello. Embrace what you know, not what you feel. Because we're Pentecostal, uh, we have learn to define our experiences and we've got them narrowed down to two. Because people are either going to tell me one of two things. I'm either on the mountain or I'm in the valley. I've never had anybody tell me they were somewhere between those two points. <laughs> Think about it for a second. I'm on the mountain or in the valley. And then they sing the song, you know, the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And I'm thinking, is there not a spot between those two areas? Right. Amen. <laughs> My God. 
Help me here, Toria. Is there not a spot between my highest high and my lowest low where I can find a little bit of balance? Hello? My mommy used to tell me I'm whole hog or nothing. Does anybody know what that means? When I drank, I really drank. When I partied, I really partied. When I'm up, I'm really up. And when I'm down, I'm really down. Uh, I've had people say, you know, maybe there's a chemical imbalance there. I, I don't know anything about all that stuff. But I do know this. I'm trying not to be that person. I don't want to be as high as a kite or as low as a dog and, and there not be any in between. That balance can only be found by me understanding where God is in my life at any particular point. Whether it's geography or anything else I happen to be attached to. So we classify that, I'm on a mountain. Uh, my, my cousin, Brother Livingston, he, he teases me a lot and uh, he calls me Kite Boy. He says, there are two JDs. He says, JD or JD. I don't know. Sometimes people are attached to a piece of geography, a place where you were when God did something for you. And so we feel like if I can go to that geographical area or get back in that same building or the same little piece of dirt that God can do the same for me now than that, that he did then. And I think there's truth to that. But it's also very misleading because it makes you think you have to go back there to be blessed. Amen. I do not have to return anywhere I've ever been for a blessing. I know that because David said, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Everywhere I go, the Lord is going to be with me. Come on, somebody. Every step I take, he's probably already walked that step out, and I'm walking in his footprints. So let me talk to you for a minute about your mountains and valleys. Get ready. Did you just climb that mountain? Did you just slide down into that valley? Or is it possible that God placed you where you are at for such a time as this? A lot of people don't even know how they got where they're at. But they have no explanation for it. You just find yourself there. And a lot of people think that they climbed the valley and or climbed the mountain or slid into the valley and you know, God was nowhere around. In fact, he was there all the time and many times because God knows what's best for us. He allows me to get myself into circumstances when he could block me if he wanted to, but he knows if he keeps doing that, I'll never learn anything. The greatest things I've learned, people stopped and took the time to teach me, or I made a mistake trying to do it on my own. And boy, there's no greater lesson than a, a, a mistake lesson. Ah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have done it that way. Well, that, those are times that you and I are going to remember. Now I'm just going to get wound up. I feel it coming. I'm going to be reading from the book of Psalms. David said, hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I realized when I was studying and praying about this message and with some things I'm dealing with as a pastor, a lot of people are simply overwhelmed. I'm in an overwhelming situation. This is very difficult. I have not walked down this path before. It seems like it just keeps stacking and stacking and piling up and piling up on me. 
Even David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Which lets me to know that there is a place in God. There's a place in God. It's always going to be up. I'm just telling you, it's always going to be up. The Bible says, look to the hills from which cometh our help. Hello, somebody. God has a place for you and I to find comfort and rest in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of all kinds of crazy situations. I know this is true today because David said, when I get in this situation, lead me to a higher place than where I am at. So because my mind works really different than a lot of people. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Nobody has ever told me that they were underwhelmed. That bothers me. Can not, somebody not be underwhelmed for a minute? And so then, because my mind thinks crazy things, I thought, well, I wonder if there's just a whelm. And <laughs> is there a whelm? There's an overwhelmed. So I wonder if there's just a regular whelm. And guess what? There is. I was shocked. I was shocked. I looked it up. It's in the dictionary. It's W-A-T-L-M. Nobody's ever come to me and said, I'm whelmed. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm just, I'm whelmed. <laughs> Maybe if you can find some balance, you can stop being overwhelmed and just be whelmed. Yeah. Or maybe you can be underwhelmed. The whelm simply means to submerge or to bury. So I'm thinking, who invented the word overwhelmed? If I'm already buried, if I'm already submerged, how much more could you do to me? How much further can you push me under? To make me feel like I feel. That's why God said. <laughs> that's why David said. Lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. I can't help it if I feel submerged. Everybody knows. I always go to it. I've got a daughter who is fighting for her life. I've got all this going right now. I've got that going right now. And I realized yesterday. When I was studying. That I might be a little overwhelmed right now. And when I found that word, I said, God, could you take away some of the whelmity? I'm inventing words now. Can you take away some of the whelmity and just get me back to a normal whelm? Amen. And when you get me back to the normal whelm, would you mind letting me come up out of the water just a little bit so I can breathe? And I promised you, when I began to pray that, I felt the presence of God. And he said, I will not leave you in your circumstance. I will not leave you in that situation. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of the earth. So there is a place that is less than whelming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Things just kind of pile up. And sometimes they just keep piling rather than me removing those. I let other stuff build on them and then all of a sudden here I am in this condition. Let's go to Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hang with me. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. I'm probably going to get in trouble here. You know me, I 
like props. Need a rock. Here's my arm. Stay with me. Here's overwhelm. God says, you don't have to be that low. You don't have to be that low. And David says, if I fall, somebody come get me. Y'all want some pictures? Come on. Why would God set? I'm scared. Why would God say, "I'll put you on a rock"? Let me help you, because God is higher than my situation. Hello, God is taller than my circumstance. My circumstance is down there, and God's up here. He said, guess what? I will set you up here by me. I will fix your problem. I will handle your situation, and I will set you on a rock that is higher than you are. Now, I'm getting somewhere because I have made myself aware by studying the Word of God that God has specific places for us outside of the corporate areas where we hang out. I'm with the body now. I'm with my friends and loved ones. Got baby dedications to do and people to pray for. But sometimes, when I'm not in that environment, I feel safe in here right now. Because there's a lot of anointing in here and a lot of power. Because I know the Bible says if one can send a thousand to flight, the two can send ten thousand. So we've got a bunch of that in here right now. But God, I'm getting ahead of my nose. i got to stop. I'm going to back up. I'm going to do this right. You ready? Uh, Antonio Psalms 40. Here we go. I waited patiently for the Lord. Here's David again. He inclined unto me. He heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. Where was that? Down there. He brought me out of the miry clay. Down there. And what did he do? I found my balance. Because when I was going through my circumstance, I was not well established. I let the enemy draw me away from the church. I let the enemy cause me to think people at the church were, were, were not my friends. And, and I, I got in this situation where I isolated myself from the body. The worst place you can ever find yourself is isolated from the body of Christ. Because you don't just need God, you need the body as well. He's the vine, we're the branch, we all need one another. Oh. Graceland, Dalton, uh, you bought your first house. If you have over, sorry. Got your first baby. That was prophetic. You both got good jobs. God's been good to you. But because you're young, you're doing what we call getting established. Amen. There's probably people in here with more money in the bank than you have. I know of at least one or two, but I can't give it away. There's probably people here that have bigger houses than you have. Because this is your what? It's your starter house, right? I know you have boats of a bigger house, but I see you putting stuff on Facebook like, is that you doing that or is that you, Lindsay? Huh? Oh, yeah, you. You didn't put a barn on there the other day? Who did that? Well, I blamed you for it. It doesn't matter whether you did or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw it. It says I'm moving to Tennessee. Yeah, I got you. And, and 
Whatever, but you're not moving to Tennessee just for the record. <laughs> She's my friend. I'm, I'm getting established. Sometimes it takes people time to get established in the Lord. That's why they call, that's why some people can't handle strong preaching. Because you're not ready for strong preaching. You still need the milk of the word. I, I'm not even going to get into that today. I, I said it, but I'm not going to get into it. Hang with me a second. Let's, let's talk about Moses for a minute. Exodus 33. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Moses is talking to God. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. I'm going to establish something here that's going to make some people mad on social media. But nobody has ever seen the face of God. Okay? You can make a movie about it and say you was there all you want. I believe you might have had a vision. I mean, you might have had something. But you cannot look at God and live. So I know that you didn't go there. But I went to heaven. Well, I'm sorry. But Jesus said, for no man hath ascended into heaven. I believe him. I do believe people have visions. But I do not believe anyone has seen God's face and they're still breathing because it would be against what the word itself says. Either this word is true or it is not. That's my rant. I'm done now. Y'all are welcome. No extra charge. <laughs> Here's one of my favorite scriptures right here. Verse 21. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. What a wonderful place that would be. Even the disciples argued about who's going to sit next to the Lord. Now, I'll bet, you know, who's going to get that, that seat of, uh, of authority and, and be there by the Lord? The Lord said, there's a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Is it yet getting in your spirit? That whenever God moves us to a place that is safe, there's always a rock involved. When he wanted me to get saved, there was a rock involved. Because he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hello. For some reason, there's some kind of preserving power in the rock. He's the rock of my salvation. Come on, somebody. He is the rock of ages. I can stop there and preach about this for a little bit. Because, you know, if the Lord says that's a place by me, that's where I want to go. I love you, baby. But the Lord said he's got a place by him. Right. I, I, I want to be in that place. Watch. And thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. I have to cover you because you can't see my face, because I'll have to kill you. Well, I'm not going to kill you, but you flesh cannot live in the presence of the glory of God in his purest form. That's why he, he had to send flesh. We couldn't behold him. He said, I will take my hand away, and thou shalt see me, my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Stay with me a second. God will not let me see his face. So when he walks by, all I can do when he takes his hand down is see where he went the other way. Now, uh, Antonio Phillips, Psalms uh, 1833. 
I preached this recently, I think. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and he setteth me upon my high places. Stay with me. I'm a deer hunter. Okay, everybody knows that. The reference to hinds feet in high places refers to the nature of how a deer walks. When a deer is on a mountain, stay with me, he puts his foot feet up first and sees that the footing is sure and when he sees that the footing is sure, he puts his back feet where his front feet were. Front feet first. Back feet in the same place the front feet went. So if God says there's a place by me and he's walking the other way, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in those tracks. Yeah. He's already been there. He knows it's safe for me. Hello. So what I got to do is learn to put my heart wherever his feet went. He's already walked that out in front of me. He knew I was down. He knew I was out. He knew I was perplexed. He knew I was overwhelmed. He knew that I was going through this and I was going through that. But he got out in front of me and he walked every step of that by. And he said, I have a place for you that is higher than when you are at. Lord have mercy. I got one more scripture and I'm going to get this out. We've still got a lot of time. It's a quarter till. Psalms 8 and 1. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Everybody knows that God inhabits space and time, that he is not bound to natural law. O oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. In other words, everything is covered in the excellency of the name of of the Lord. Okay. So there's times that I need more God, I need God in more than a general way. Hello? I know he's there. I know what the word says. But Brother Steve, sometimes God gets out of the corporate space he inhabits when he knows I'm going through something. And it's like a laser beam. <laughs> he's the world's greatest multitasker. And with everything else he's got going, Sister Julie, he can... <laughs> I should have brought my laser today. I got one. Focus on my situation. Amen. When everything else is going, he can pinpoint the spot where I'm standing. I have I, I had a GPS unit. I gave it to a friend of mine. I used it because I got lost in the woods one time. It took me two hours to find my way out. It was dark and I got scared. I got a I, 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 I got a GPS unit. What I didn't know is that because of the laws, a GPS unit can only get you so close to the same point. It gets you in the general area. Just like if you pull my wife tracks my phone. <laughs> That's fine, I'm accountable. Because I try very soon. And I can see the general area where she's at. I can't tell you how many times she's been missing. And I open that thing up and it says, Goodwill. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> it's 
it is what it is. He loves goodwill. I had to study that. So I found out, Brother Josh, the reason that you can only get so close is because people learn to use the GPS unit to put on bombs. Okay? And so the, 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 the GPS unit that the government will allow me to have, I cannot put to it on a bomb and specifically make it hit one person. Believe you me, they can hit one person if they want to because that's how technological our society is. All they did was figure out something God already knew. Yeah. And that's where I am at all times yeah. and what I'm going through. Yeah. <laughs> how many are thankful today? Yeah. Hello? Said so how many are thankful today yeah. for the rock yeah. that is higher than I? Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on. We're going to dedicate a baby, and then we're going to have a special prayer in just a little bit. Yeah. And uh, we're excited about this. Is Everly awake? <laughs> oh, she missed her own baby dedication. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, we're going to have the family come up if they would. say a couple things to you today before I anoint the baby. I take baby dedication very seriously. Okay? This is not just a ceremony because we're not a ceremonial church. Um, when we do this, it's a very serious thing because you're saying that Lord, I'm putting my daughter in your hands to protect and to guide and whatever you choose for her, I trust and I'm good with. That's huge. Uh, I'm not going to preach a sermon, but in the Bible, if you dedicated a child to the Lord, you took him to the temple and left them there. Yeah, actually. That's, that's how Samuel got there because his mom dropped him off. Uh, so we're not going to leave her here today, by the way. She's beautiful. I, I, I want to make a play on her name because it's Everly. And I just couldn't get over the ever part because I realize in my own life right now that my own daughter's it's just a forever thing. And I might have a daughter or two that's watching me, and I, I know I have at least one, and they're probably not going to remember this, but when they were young, I made them both promise me that they would never get married <laughs> and that they live with me forever. And they both said yes. And then they betrayed me. <laughs> They both have wonderful husbands, and they're doing great. Both of my girls are in church, my family, all my grandkids. My little grandson, Ezra, got baptized last week. His brother got baptized a few, few months ago. And we dedicated our babies to the Lord, and I just think it really means a lot. But someday, I'm just going to tell you now, Dalton, uh, I've grown kind of close to them. We've been, I make them come to marriage counseling because we're fixing to have a wedding here in a few days. What, 58 days, 56, 50 something? Um, if I could go back and do some things different, oh Lord. Uh, we're not going to talk about this publicly. <laughs> but if I could go back and tweak a couple things and 
make some changes. I would never be too tired to read a book. Amen. Yeah, I, I had a daughter that wanted to be read to, and I can remember I'd, whatever it was, I'd say, no, Daddy's too tired tonight. I would never be that tired again. As a matter of fact, I actually tried to get my daughter to let me read her book the other day. She wouldn't do it. <laughs> it was Amber. No, Dad. But if I could, I would. So what I'm telling you, I got emotional. I apologize for that. But don't let those things slip by you. Because I promise you, just like that, you'll have a 37-year-old daughter and a 30-something-year-old daughter and grandbabies running all over the place. And, and you'll look back at all that. Right now you have a chance because I'm looking you in the face and telling you, if you're not careful, you will do that because we're so stinking busy. So when we pray for her in a second, don't let this just be a ceremony to you. This is a real prayer to a real God with a real meaning. And the word everly, amen, you're kind of saying, Lord, you can have her foreverly, okay? Uh, and just trust that God will take care of her. Amen. You believe that today? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Why don't y'all stand with me? I see we're not social distancing. <laughs> it is what it is right now. But I'm going to anoint her with this oil. It might be better that she's asleep. I don't know. But God, right now, in your name today, Jesus, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I anoint this family. I anoint this mother and this dad with this olive oil. And God, I place this little girl at the bidding of her mother and father in your hands. God, she is yours to do with what you want. We trust you implicitly, and Lord, we know that you're going to keep your hand on her, that you're going to protect her from disease, from harm, from harmful influence, and God, that we will teach her, we will do our part, Lord, to teach her to serve and to love you. How important is that today? God, we want her to grow up to be a Christian and to have that protection that we have from all the evils of this world. God, I pray for the entire uh, family today, uh, aunts, uncles, whoever, friends, uh, mom and dad, right now in Jesus' name, God, we ask you to do this for us in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, y'all. All right, thank you so much. Sister Corrine.